Hi everybody and welcome to the FNS Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, back for another solo mission. My teenage son Jackson, who normally joins me, doesn't really watch ROH. He's waiting until they get some fans in the stands. So I'm back by myself just to talk about this week's ROH TV offering. If you're a new listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you'd like to contact us at any time with anything at all, you can reach us at fnswrestling at gmail.com, fns underscore wrestling underscore podcast on Instagram, or on YouTube. You can just leave a comment there. I'll get back to you if that's where you happen to be listening to us. So welcome. Thanks for giving us a chance, or thanks for giving us another chance if you're back. And let's move straight into talking about what I thought was a pretty entertaining week of Ring of Honor Wrestling. So let's do that now. So Quinn welcomes us to the show as she always does, lets us know the main event tonight will feature Tony Deppen of the newly sort of formed Faction Violence Unlimited versus Tracy Williams of the Foundation, and that will be for the World Television Championship. Also on this show, the OGK, which is Taven, uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, um, who now have the time since they're saying Vincent has disappeared and is leaving them alone. They will face the newly formed team uh, as of last week of the Beer City Bruiser and Ken Dixon. And we get a little recap of Dixon's turn on his dojo mates last week to join the Bruiser. So that's where we stand with that. Quinn then announces that she will not be at the announce desk, desk next week as she has her first ever match in ROH against uh, Angelina Love. So that should be interesting. That's something I'm looking forward to seeing is Quinn McKay in the ring. So in the opening match, we are going to get former Mexa Squad members Flamita and Bandito. They will face off to try and settle their differences after Flamita has recently walked away from the Mexa Squad group. So we do get Flamita and Bandito right off the bat. As Flamita's making his entrance, we do cut to a brief interview from earlier with Quinn speaking to him. Uh, she asked Flamita if this match against Bandito will help him work through his issues with the other Mexa Squad members. Flamita replies in Spanish with subtitles, saying that he doesn't know and he doesn't care. He then looks directly into the camera and speaks to Bandito, says if Bandito wants to play with fire, then let's play. Bandito then makes his entrance, so he gets a split-screen interview from Quinn uh, from a little bit earlier in the day, I guess, as well. She asks if this match will repair the relationship between Bandito and Flamita or if, she, if it will make things worse. Bandito thinks the match will fix everything, and he then speaks into the camera to Flamita, says that they need to give everything in the ring, and after that, they will be friends and brothers, just like always. So I thought these were good, really quick bilingual promos, What I love when they let uh, performers speak in their first language. I just find you get way more of their attitude, their personality comes through, so I like that. And just reminding us of the issues between the two in case you're a new viewer or a lapsed viewer or something. So I thought that was a solid little, um, very short little promos by each man here. So this match starts off really fast, never really slows down, to, not to spoil anything. Immediate forearm exchange followed by some rope running and near misses by both men. We get a pump kick by Bandito. They stand, Flamito talks trash before a drop kick and a suicide dive as Bandito escapes to the outside off of the drop kick. Flamita then runs Bandito into a couple barricades and we head into commercial. And I, just an odd note here, the commercial was LA Knight and Ric Flair together in a commercial for, I think it was car insurance or something, but that, just an interesting little tidbit there. We come back from the commercial and shown that Flamita has been targeting Bandito's shoulder during the break. We get a corner clothesline and a running boot by Flamita and just, he is so fast. These guys are so quick. It's It was tough to take notes and keep up, but I tried to do decent details here for you guys, even in case you don't see the show yourself. Tornado DDT countered with a back fist and a corkscrew flip from the second ropes by Bandito. Ridiculous head scissor takeover, like the snap and aggression he got on it was really impressive. Uh, and Bar Bandito swung him around four times, I think it was, before executing uh, the head scissors. Fosbury flopped to the floor um, to Flamita. Bandito smashes Flamita's knee repeatedly on the ring post as the commentary team inform us this is sort of a new side of Bandito. Even Quinn has commented on how nice Bandito is, so in theory he's fighting his friend or former friend, but he now he's sort of, not shortcuts, but he's definitely trying to hurt uh, and target a specific body part of his former friend. Bandito then grabs a broom from under the ring, uses it to hit Flamita's legs as they're wrapped around the ring post. Uh, again, I guess referee's discretion here. Bandito to, continues to attack Flamita's knee back in the ring. 
Then they're outside again. An Irish rip is, whip is reversed. Bandito hits the barricade shoulder first as that's sort of uh, an injury he's been selling in this match. We get a strike exchange as each man is balancing on top of the barricade, which is about four inches wide, so pretty impressive. And we get a nice hurricane rana to the floor from the top of the barricade by Bandito that was really cool. Both are down. The ref starts counting. We get a 20 count in Ring of Honor, so at 19, both men dive back into the ring. We get a super kick by Flamita, and Bandito responds by using Flamita's chest to hit a back. So he like runs up him and does a backflip and then into a crucifix for a near fall, which was really cool. Bandito is then tripped into the turnbuckle before Flamita hits a kick to the back of Bandito's head and a 450 for a two count. Muscle Buster is countered into a side knee bar by Bandito. We get a vicious slap exchange. These guys are just teeing off on each other. A kick exchange. A pop-up cutter by Bandito, who then runs into a super kick and both men are down. Sunset Bomb is blocked by Bandito, and he hits a nasty springboard Hurricane Rana. Again, just snaps it off really nicely. Uh, this gets him a two count. Bandito gets Flamita up on his shoulder, but while he's spinning around about to execute something, he accidentally takes out the referee. We get the X knee move delivered by Bandito, but then a low blow immediately by Flamita, which the ref doesn't see because he's just sort of coming to at this point. And then all we get a standing boot. Um, sorry, Flamita pins Bandito by standing with his boot on Bandito's face for the three count. So basically this low blow, that's my only sort of criticism of this match was that the low blow just killed Bandito and he was done and he got pinned off of this um, with a man just putting his boot on his face basically. So, I mean, this was, I thought, a fantastic match, and it got quite a bit of time on this program. These guys are so fast. I saw no visible mistakes. Uh, just an incredible opening match that would steal most of the shows I watch each week, if I'm being honest. Um, highly recommend this match. I've said it before. I'm, I'm falling in love with Bandito. The guy is a star, but maybe too nice, right? So this is him starting to show a bit more aggression, I guess, uh, attacking his former friend's leg viciously. And the heel, Flamita, wins a very competitive match here. I guess because he's willing to cheat, right? That's sort of the level he's willing to go where Bandito isn't quite at that point yet. So it sort of cost him the match, and I thought that this was a fantastic start to the show. So for the next match, Brian Malonis has joined the commentary team, as it is his former partner, the Beer City Bruiser, and his new partner, Ken Dixon, versus the OGK, which is the original Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. Um, I can't see this match doing a good job of following that opener, but I guess we'll find out, right? We're shown a vignette of Taven and Bennett talking from some time earlier. Bennett says that Vincent is gone, right? But Taven just can't relax. He says it's not just Vincent they need to worry about. Their tag team match is all but set. Uh, a title match, actually, because they are the number one contenders right now. So their title match is all but set. They just need to take care of business in this match. Taven is upset about the bottle shot from the Beer City Bruiser and his posts on social media about it. He has a list, and the Beer City Bruiser is on it. That sort of thing. Fine promo. Um, it's going to come up a few times here. I can't stand these two guys as baby faces, but uh, there's nothing wrong with this promo, I guess. I just don't believe anything they say as good guys, because they don't seem like they are to me. But that'll come up again. Um, so, uh, they... Dixon starts the match with a cheap shot on Taven, so he takes control early. We get corner kicks and back elbows by Dixon, rope running and a drop kick by Taven, TKO on the sort of over the top rope onto the top rope by Taven, a Uranagi on the apron by Bennett as the ref's, ref has his back turned, so Bennett sort of sneaks in a high impact move on the apron. Blue Thunderbomb by Taven, which they call the purple Thunderbomb, because I guess that's Taven's signature color, I'm not sure. Bennett is tagged in. Running clothesline by Bennett for a two count. Bennett trips into the ropes as the Beer City Brawler finally tags in. We get stomps by the Beer City Brawler heading into commercial. Back from commercial, Beer City Brawler is out. He did very, very little in this match. It's Dixon back in after the commercial, now working Bennett's fingers. We do get a nice uh, Death Valley driver by Bennett, and the Beer City Brawler makes the save. Yells at Dixon for basically making a rookie mistake here. Taven takes over with kicks, a backbreaker, a DDT, and I think it was a roll of the dice. Actually, a nice flurry by Taven. I gotta give him credit where credit is due, I guess. Beer City Brawler almost sits on Taven. Taven moves out of the way, hits a running knee for two. Both of the OGK chopping away at Beer City Bruiser. Forearm, disaster kick, and Dixon has to break up the pinfall attempt here. Dixon gets knocked to the floor. We get a brain buster, kind of impressively, as the Beer City Bruiser is a big, big man. Uh, but he gets up and hits a pump handle slam to Taven. 
Dixon is back in, runs Bennett off the apron, hits a power slam to Taven for two, because Dixon kind of gets up and stops the pinfall. I think he the point is he was going for some sort of bigger move, uh, and of course this is a rookie mistake because it looks like he could have had the pinfall. So the Beer City Bruiser is not happy with this mistake, and it leads to a backpack stunner drop kick combination by OGK to pick up the win over Ken Dixon, who took the pinfall here. Uh, and to, they stay on top of the tag team rankings. We're told they've been undefeated since returning to ROH. There's then a beer bottle shot to the Beer City Bruiser since Taven's such a baby face, I guess. That's such a baby face move, right? To attack somebody with the weapon after you've already beaten them. But I digress. Malonis yells. Uh, I remember, he's at commentary. So he's yelling at the OGK as they're sort of heading up the ramp. He goes into the ring to check on the Beer City Bruiser. And you can hear Malonis, the mic picks up him telling the bruiser that he was right all along. He helps up the Beer City Bruiser and then immediately attacks Dixon as the bruiser smiles. So it looks like these two are back together as sort of a monster heel tag team, which is fine by me. Um, I'm not huge fans of them in any carnation, to be honest, but I do prefer them as heels rather than playing sort of the comedy lower card character. So if they can be a monster heel tag team... That's a better option as far as I'm concerned. The match overall was a decent tag team match, but the Beer City Bruiser really didn't do anything. Uh, and it's interesting that Dixon's role seems to already be over. It was literally a partnership for one week, and now he is gone. So I don't know if he'll remain sort of quote-unquote main roster or head back to the dojo where he has been. The guy does look like he has some potential, definitely as a heel character. But it looks like his turn with the Beer City Bruiser is already over after one week. So the result of this match was never in doubt, and I personally just don't enjoy watching the OGK. Uh, they kind of have go-away heat for me at this point as baby faces. If you want to turn them heels, then maybe you have something, but they just do not work as baby faces. I don't believe it for a minute, and it sort of takes me out of most of the things they're trying to do right now. We then make our transition to the main event, which is Tony Deppen versus Tracy Williams for the television championship. Uh, this is a big opportunity for Deppen in ROH. He's sort of been the indie darling and the underdog sort of uh, presentation until he's joined this this group with Brody King and a couple other gentlemen. So the code of honor is reluctantly adhered to by Deppen to start the match, and we get holds and counters to start things out. Uh, eventually, both men are back on their feet, and they struggle to gain an advantage. We get a strike exchange, and Tracy Williams fires up, dominates Deppen in the corner with chops and kicks. We then get some sort of gory special type submission, but William, or sorry, by Williams, but Deppen ends up escaping. Deppen connects with a double stomp to the neck as we head into a commercial break. Williams somehow got control over the break. It looked like it was a suplex from the second rope they show us. Both of them are on the apron now for a strike exchange before an insiguri sends Williams to the floor. Diving cannonball over the top by Deppen, and then a crossbody once back in the ring. We get a foot stomp, a knee and a knee drop to the neck by Deppen for a two count. Infinite chops from Deppen in the corner before a back elbow by Williams sort of slows the momentum a bit. We get the, I don't know if he has a signature name for it, it's a drop down DDT onto the top turnbuckle by Williams, and I think it always looks cool for a two count. Then he transitions quickly into a cross face, and Deppen has to get to the ropes to sort of break the hold. We get a forearm exchange and a Death Valley driver by Tracy Williams for a two count. Deppen is down, and the ref sort of goes over to check on him, and then um, Deppen suddenly rolls up Williams for a quick two count. Two big closed fist punches to Williams, because uh, this is not a pure match, and, and so Deppen has unlimited rope breaks, and he can sort of use the closed fist, fist um, which obviously is not what the foundation they're trying to bring back pure wrestling, but this is not a pure rules match, so Deppen lands two big punches, and then a one-arm cattle mutilation is how the commentators described it by Tony Deppen, but Williams eventually gets to the ropes. Deppen misses a double stomp, gets hit with a pile driver, and I honestly thought this was the finish, but Deppen gets his foot on the ropes, and the commentary team are shocked, as they also thought it was over here. Williams then takes a minute to taunt Deppen, as Deppen sort of calling him on, asking for more punishment. This is sort of Deppen's character has been that he just takes a beating and never gives in and will never stop. So here he's asking for further punishment. Um, but then as this is happening, Deppen rolls through, catches Williams with a sudden pinfall for the three count and wins the TV title as Williams is furious in the ring. Violence Unlimited then come down to celebrate with Deppen as the show goes off the air. 
so I thought this was a very good match uh, with the somewhat surprising ending. I did not expect a title to change hands here. Uh, I'm fine with this decision. It sort of legitimizes Violence Unlimited right away, answers some of the questions about Deppin being included in this group since up until he just randomly joined this faction, he'd been portrayed as the classic undersized, underrated boy next door uh, sort of baby face. Uh, now he's sort of a little bit more legitimate here. The foundation also, I like that they're kind of losing their grip on all of the championships they had as the pure wrestling and the ultra realistic stuff that I thought I wanted when ROH sort of rebooted has worn thin for me. And I do want a little bit more professional wrestling and entertainment in my wrestling, uh, despite not really thinking I needed it. I was hoping ROH would just be my outlet for the super realistic wrestling, but I kind of got bored by that. I'm not going to lie. So I'm glad it's sort of been spiced up a little bit. So I thought this was a, a pretty good match as well. So my overall thoughts on this show, I thought for the second week in a row, this was a very good show. Uh, the opener was fantastic match, further the story with the breakup of the Mexa squad. Um, but even just if you have no interest in ROH or you're just listening to this for something to do, just check out this match. I thought it was terrific. I may see a better match this week because I do watch lots of wrestling and I hope I do. But I'll honestly be a little bit surprised if I see a better TV match than what I saw Bandito and Flamita do here. So that was fantastic. Uh, the OGK Dixon Beer City Bruiser match was solid, um, but really the Bruiser did next to nothing. And I, I again, not to beat the dead horse, but I can't stand babyface OGK. So some people probably like that much more than I did. It's not that it was a bad match. It's just that it didn't hold a lot of interest for me, any of the characters right now involved. I guess I'm most curious about Ken Dixon being sort of new to the main roster coming up from the dojo. He looked okay here, but nothing spectacular for sure. The main event was very good. The fact that the title changed hands was a nice surprise. Both the guys put on a, a pretty good match. And it's, again, it's just sort of helped to legitimize and help Tony Deppin make his name within this promotion. Because uh, until then, I think he's pretty much been an independent worker. I haven't seen him on anywhere before this. So um, I quite liked the main event as well. And the opener was fantastic. So I thought a very solid week from Ring of Honor and at the risk of sort of repeating myself, I'm going to give it the same grade as last week, which is a B plus. So that's like a, almost an 8 out of 10 for me. So I thought that was a really good show. And again, if you're just listening to me recap it because you generally don't watch the show yourself, I recommend going and finding Bandito Flamita. You can find ROH stuff free um legally on the internet i know you can find their weekly show every week if you really want to i think it's on the fight app so feel free to go check that out it is something that i would recommend for this week and that's going to bring us to the end of this review i guess so as always like thanks if you're listening to me talk about wrestling fantastic anytime you spend uh, listening to this stuff each week i really do appreciate it again it's just a hobby that sort of sprung out of a pandemic and a lockdown situation that I'm pretty sure my son and I will continue to do. We continue to be free. We just enjoy doing this. We just want to put up a bunch of content for people to listen to with no ads, no requests for any Patreon, no asks for money, no sponsorship, no nothing. Just wrestling fans talking about wrestling. And if you want to listen to us, great. We really do appreciate it. Again, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. But it looks like that's about time for me to sign off. So hopefully you can join me and my son Jackson on our flagship show on Saturday. I believe we're coming up on episode 42, where we talk about all kinds of wrestling and some wrestling trivia and some wrestling news. And even he, my son does a small section about wrestling action figures, what's new and exciting from that world. So if you haven't already, we'd love for you to join us this coming Saturday. And until then, take care.